The really awful thing about this is the people who practice the most, who put the most effort and time into getting better and doing it right, are the people who are the most at risk for these safety concerns. Guys and girls, thank you for watching this quick video on safety when it comes to holsters. I cannot stress what I'm about to say enough. I'm gonna to try to keep it as short and sweet as I possibly can. We all need to take a long, hard look at the safety practices that we have in place for using a holster. We've got countless students that have come out to start working with us on holster work, and it is thrilling. Holster 101, Holster 201, the CFI student intro competitions, these are all awesome things, and it's getting a lot of new shooters utilizing holsters for the very first time. There are two main areas that we have got to laser focus in on when we use a holster, because safety mistakes in these two areas specifically can cost us dearly, and they're insidious, and they creep up on veteran shooters and brand new shooters all the same. And ironically enough, shooters who practice specifically dry fire at home the most are the most at risk for falling victim to these safety mistakes. So let's cover them very quickly. First one is introducing the trigger finger into the trigger too soon. And this comes with speed, and this comes with repetitions, and this comes with dry fire, and this comes from being pushed on the range. And we wanna work efficiency. And what's more efficient if I need to get my finger into that trigger eventually than doing it early, right? Absolutely not, absolutely not ever, ever. That trigger finger can only get introduced to that trigger, inside that trigger guard, once the gun is safely parallel to the ground, oriented downrange towards the threat, towards the target, and if we're shooting with two hands, if we're shooting with our support hand on the gun as well, we like to tell our students, the support hand contact releases the trigger finger, and never before, never before. What happens if we dry fire repetition after repetition after repetition after repetition? We start getting lazy, we start wanting to go faster and faster, and this turns into that, right? So never, ever, ever introduce your trigger finger into the trigger guard until that gun is oriented downrange and ideally until we have made support hand contact on the gun itself. Then we can begin to prep or stage that trigger as we present the gun to target, but never before. Under stress, under speed, it does not matter how good you are, how many times you've done it, if you get in the habit of getting your finger on that trigger before the gun is in a safe direction to go off, it's just a matter of time. Second most important thing, reholstering. We talk about it all the time. Every Holster 101 class starts with an overview of how when I put the gun back into the holster, I'm applying force towards the rear of the gun. And what way does force need to be interacting on that gun to make that gun go off? To the back. What are our reholstering steps that we need to do every time, including dry fire? We're out on target, fingers on trigger. Finger comes off trigger. Gun back to high ready. Support hand clears the clothing. Gun is still pointed down range. Visually check that the holster is clear. Lean my hips out. When I lean my hips out, what am I doing? I am pointing the muzzle of the gun away from me. I'm pointing the holster away from me, which when I go to put that gun in there is gonna keep the gun pointed away from my body. And then, slowly keeping my eyes locked on my holster, look that gun back into the holster. Same thing with strong side, guys. I'm out on target. Shoot, 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 shoot. I'm done shooting. Finger comes off trigger. Gun back to high ready. Support hand keeping the gun down range clears the holster. Visually look as best I can that that holster is clear. Another reason I like to carry appendix. And then, Lean, keeping the gun away from my body. Reholster. Does it look goofy? Yeah. Does it take a minute? Yeah. 
does it keep you from shooting yourself? Yeah, it absolutely does. So, here's the thing. What is the first thing to go by the wayside when we are doing repetition after repetition of dry fire? Everything we just said. Everything we just said. I've been guilty of it. I've seen instructors demonstrate in front of live classes being guilty of letting those two things fall by the wayside. This is something we need to do every single round, every single rep, every single dry fire. And it sounds annoying and it sounds stupid until you feel your heart in your throat because you just almost shot your foot off. I have seen it happen both in person and on video to people who are really, really good. So please, guys and girls, do yourself the one favor of making sure that you do those two things every time you come out of the holster and every time you go back into the holster, not just on the live range, but every single dry fire rep you do. It'll take longer, it'll be more annoying, and it'll feel kind of silly after a while to take a completely unloaded gun that you've checked five times over, already pulled the trigger on, and every single time, look it slowly back in. But I promise you, if you do it that way in dry fire, you are going to do it that way on the range when the gun is loaded. And if you do it wrong during dry fire, I can also promise you it's only a matter of time until you do it on the range with a loaded gun, wrong. And there is a non-zero chance that when you do it wrong on the range, that gun will go off. That's not a risk I'm comfortable with. I hope it's not a risk that any of you are comfortable with. So thank you for sticking with me through the soapbox, through the rant. Please, please, please reach out with any questions that you have, whether it comes to exactly how to go about doing this. If you've got different holster configurations or styles, let me know. I will be happy to help any way I can. All right? Stay smart. Stay safe. Stay safe. Never stop improving. And I'll talk to you guys soon.